Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? My name is Ron Doyle. I uh, want to go over a little little problem that I had at the uh, new construction house that I had wired. Um, I've been doing uh, work for uh, contractor Kevin Donalds um, for about two and a half years now. Uh, work's been great, real consistent, um, but uh, every now and again uh, we run across the issue with uh, arc faults or arc fault combination uh, breakers uh, tripping. And right here we have a home line uh, 200 amp main panel, uh, it's 30 spaces. And uh, go to turn everything on, and I noticed that uh, number 13 was tripping an arc fault, so an arc fault issue. Uh, I like separating my circuits uh, as two lighting circuits. Uh, to code, you have to have at least two designated circuits in a residence. And um, I try to separate all my lighting separate from any outlets uh, in the residence. So if I'm doing troubleshooting, it's easier to go directly to the lighting itself and diagnose what is the problem, that it's not tagged off of an outlet. Uh, here lately, I've been having issues with the insulators. I won't mention any names. Uh, but he has shot staples in my wiring um, uh, Normally using a slap stapler uh, causes a lot of arc fault issues uh, <laughs> Let alone uh, the quality of work is not there um, I try to be neat professional so that I don't have issues with arc fault breakers uh, I started using plastic staples a number of years ago and uh, Haven't had any issues with plastic staples. Uh, so they're they're uh, it's a NM staple for Romex, um, and they're made by uh, Gardner Bender. Um, been using a lot of them. I also use the uh, DeWalt De um, um, battery-operated 18-volt staple gun. Uh, I like that. It's it's a little on the sloppy side for a lot of wire play, but it's still code compliant. Well. I'm basically uh, wanting to give a demonstration on different things that you can find with arc fault issues. And uh, on this particular number 13 uh, is the back end of this residence um, lighting circuit. So the front end, so right now both of them are on. I found out what the arc fault issue is. So I'm gonna walk through the house and uh, basically this lighting circuit starts out in the master bedroom, which is right here. Got a shower, small master master bathroom, uh, but it starts out starts out at this switch location, then it jumps over to the master closet. The switch location here and then it jumps over to the light and the fan for the master bedroom this is a four-way switch so the lighting comes over for this particular circuit with the issue this is the uh, this is the uh, kitchen can lights and this is the living room. This is a separate circuit. Uh, right now you can see I've got the ceiling cans out in the kitchen. There is a total of six of them in this house. Uh, that circuit that we're looking at, number 13 that was tripping, carries the kitchen cans, the master bathroom, master bedroom, master closet, it carries the dining room chandelier, which is small, and it carries this outside light at this uh, sliding back door. So it, it powers all this. I've already taken all the cover plates off, um, make sure grounds aren't hitting neutrals. Everything looks good in there. Uh, check the four way out, looks good in there. You just wanna make sure you're not hitting a ground and a neutral. Uh, another thing that um, I had ran across, and it was my fault this one time, uh, the device straps on these ceiling hugger type lights these lights right here if you're not paying attention and you push the wires up in the box and you put the box strap up in there with two set 
two preset screws and you put the light fixture out, do a quarter turn, uh, not even a quarter turn, eighth turn, and you need to snug those screws up. If either one of those device strap screws pinches a neutral or a hot, it will cause it to trip. And one occasion in a house, uh, had a lot of lights on this circuit, in this particular uh, case where I pinched a neutral. Five and a half hours, no, four and a half hours later on that job, I found out what I'd done wrong. And I had tightened the screws up to snug the light up to the ceiling, and I had pinched a neutral. Taking it down for inspection, the only thing I seen was a light, light brown spot on the, on the neutral wire. It did not cut the jacket. So you can bend a wire, you can crease a wire, you can smash a wire, you can pinch it, and it will cause an arc fault to trip. Uh, these things are notorious, but they're all in the name of safety. Uh, so here, this issue, and I've already diagnosed it because I don't want to bore you with that, but we have six cans. I'm going to give you a little shot of the island. It's got an island and a peninsula, and the peninsula is over there with the dishwasher at the end. It's not a bad little kitchen, um, but uh, pre-diagnosing this, what I done after I checked all my switches was I left this one hooked up right here and I killed this location and this one came on with no problem so I know all my feed wires going up to the very first light were okay then I did a connection to number two and I fed from that one to that one and I killed this can and everyone thereafter. So I had the arc fault holding on the first can, the second can, and I sent power to the third can. And when I did that test, that's when it tripped. So I took that can offline and I powered the rest of them to diagnose and make sure that my feed wires aren't damaged, damaged in the circuit. And then I had the other three cans light up I go to hook this can up, which is a Halo IC ceiling can. Uh, IC is insulation contact. It's a six inch. Uh, I've used them before. Um, probably on upwards of five or six hundred of them I've put in uh, since I've been doing electrical work. Uh, and this is the second one that I've ran into. So it's a six inch IC new construction ceiling can and it's on slide rails. This is the second one that I've ran into that's defective. And usually the, uh, what's, what part is defective in this particular light fixture that causes these issues, and I wanna show you, this can is dead right now, but there's a thermal button right inside that. So if the homeowner installs the wrong lamp, light bulb, and it heats the can up, that thermal button will break the circuit and protect the wires, keeping the house from burning down. Uh, I can't tell you the date that they, they uh, implemented this. Uh, it used to be um, you'd install a ceiling can and you'd have to leave a void all the way around the can. You couldn't put any insulation around it. Well, they were basically um, a heat loss. Every single can in the house was a heat loss. So, uh, you know, uh, our standards got more strict and tighter and they mandated that, uh, that we now have to use uh, insulation around all the cans. Uh, some cans they make are double wall can. Well, I use these, they're contractor grade. Uh, usually I get a discount buying two of them, uh, two cases at a time, so it's 12 lights at a time. You get a little bit of a break. And uh, I try to wire uh, all my houses efficiently so that I can make a profit. As a business owner, uh, that's the name of the game. So. I do house wiring for Kevin Donalds. I do it per square foot. And uh, the, uh, he's happy with my work. I try to make everybody happy. Uh, sometimes uh, it ends up that uh, I'm not the one happy because I've got like uh, two hours invested into this trying to diagnose this problem. So now where this cans are already installed and looks like the Insulators have already got in here and spray foamed on me. Um, I'm going to be 
removing this can from the box and the ceiling tracking and buying another one and swapping this out. Uh, they're not that hard to swap out. Uh, drop, you know, basically three screws. You can see these slotted holes right there on the outside. Here is a, another one right here, but there's three holes. And this slides up in that track and you tighten it up. And you set this flush with the drywall. Uh, and then put all your guts back in it. But uh, this is the one, this is the culprit to the problem. And two and a half hours later, I just wanted to make a video letting you all know these can be the cause of arc fault tripping. Uh, be aware, um, you know, tricks of the trade. Uh, this is not really for Sparkies to watch, but hey, if you want to watch it, great. Uh, if you like, share, give me a thumbs up, make some comments, uh, send it to me, let me know what you think. Uh, I know I'm not the only one with this, this problem. This is the second time. Look, God bless. Y'all have a wonderful day.